Hey guys, it's me, Just the Glam Pixie. Long time no see. Um, I have been very, very busy, not only with preparations for competition and getting everything ready at my dance studio, but then now we're in isolation and I had to completely reorganize my entire job. So that's taken up a lot of time, but I'm back now and I'm hoping to get you guys some videos out very regularly. So make sure that you guys like this video and subscribe down below so you can see what I have coming out. And without further ado, let's get into how I did this curly hair look and what life has been like since this whole isolation thing. Okay, so let's get into it. So my hair, I'd say it's probably about 50% dry. I just towel dried it and let it sit while I was doing my makeup. Now I'm gonna pop in with my hair dryer. So before I get into what is going on in my crazy life right now, I'm going to blow dry my hair. I always do the um, warm setting and on low, just so I don't wanna torch it. And I do already have a heat protectant in there. I'd use like a leave-in heat protectant conditioner so that it won't get too fried. So let's go. Okay, so now my hair is totally dry. I'm just double checking that. Now I'm just gonna brush it out and then I'm gonna go ahead and part the center. I just prefer center part on me with my hair short. Um, sometimes I'll still do it on the side. Just depends on kind of my mood that day. But for today, I definitely want to do a center part. And then we're gonna start flat ironing. So first thing first, let's go ahead and pop up the top portion. So I leave like from the middle of my ear down. And then I just pop the top into a little scrunchie. Now I've got my old Remington hair straightener. This is the wet to straight. I don't do the wet to straight. I just do the dry setting. It's on green. And I only set it five out of 40. So I like a low heat setting for my hair. It works the way I need it to. So I try to keep my heat setting as low as possible. But that's just my preference. I mean, you do you. Do whatever you gotta do to get your hair curled. But for me, this is what works. Now I'm gonna take behind my ear. What I always do is for the bottom layer, I curl towards my face and then I alternate around the head. So I'll start with that. And I'm not gonna leave it on for very long. So I literally just roll it down that way. That's it. And then on the other one, I'll go the other way. And sometimes I'll leave the ends out a little bit to get more of like a beach curl. So if you want like a very beachy undone look. Don't curl all the way to the end. Leave like an inch of the hair out at the end. Now, my life. So, since this isolation hit, my life is complete, has completely changed. Um, uh, if you don't know already, I am a dance teacher. I work at a dance studio in North Carolina and we do dance competitions. Now, what it must have been at this point, two and a half weeks ago, it was a Thursday night and I was teaching and it was the day before we left for our very first competition. My boss and I were super excited. The kids were super excited. We were all so stoked to start the season and we felt really ready. Probably the most ready we've ever felt before competition. Like we were ready to go, ready to hit the stage and nail it. And it was about, I'd say probably about 7 o'clock p.m. And all of a sudden, my boss walks in and tells me that the competition has been canceled. Well, postponed indefinitely. They haven't canceled it. We're hoping to still do it just much later in the season. And we will not be leaving in the morning. Let me first say and preface, preface this by saying that I am taking this virus very seriously. My mom and my dad both are uh, over 60 and both honestly immune compromised. And my sister has an immune disorder. So she is highly immunocompromised. So I'm taking it very seriously. I immediately, once we close the studio, the next 
not the next day. We did optional classes the next day um, because this, keep in mind, nothing had been shut down at this point, nowhere. And we're in North Carolina and we're all honestly behind the trend. But California hadn't even been shut down. They barely started talking about social distancing at this time. But we went ahead and made that class optional for the kids that are required to take it and then stayed home that weekend. During that weekend, that's when everything kind of hit the fan. Um, and immediately, I'm so proud to say that my boss said their health is more important. So we are going to shut the studio down at least for this week and then we'll take it week by week from then. That Tuesday, we had a meeting <laughs> and in the meeting decided to start online classes. So we are using Zoom online classes. They're, they're interesting. Um, it took us about a week to get the hang of it, I guess. It's, it's a little difficult playing music and instructing the kids and you know, you've got kids that aren't really tech savvy and their parents aren't really tech savvy. So when you're saying mute your microphone, they can't find the microphone and I can hear dogs barking in the background and dad cussing at, you know, his video game or something. So it's, it, it took a little bit of a learning curve, I'll be honest with you. On top of that, it's also extremely tiring. So if you teach dance or are a personal trainer or work at all in like the athletic field, a coach, anything like that, and you've had to move to virtual classes, you can attest to this. It's harder. It is much harder. And my job is not easy to begin with. Like I've worked what quote unquote normal jobs. I dance professionally and now I teach dance. And I'm telling you my job day to day is very difficult. It's not easy. It's very tiring. My knees hurt every day. My throat hurts every day. I'm exhausted by the, by the time I walk in the door, I drop my stuff and I sit on the couch and I can't move. Um, this is harder. Teaching online is so much harder because not only are you having to like do the same things, but you're having to do it full out more because in a class setting, the kids kind of fall in line. Like they, it's that herd mentality where they do, they just do what is expected of them. You have to demonstrate it maybe once and then they get it and you walk around the room and correct them. And that alone is tiring, especially when you're retired and you don't really take your own health into consideration and you focus more on your students. Well, now there is no class setting. It's me on a camera. Most of them only have me being viewable. They haven't figured out yet that you can do the like multiple people viewable. So they're not watching other people. So I'm having to do pretty much the entire class full out and constantly having to correct them because it's dance if they do it improperly so now i'm sorry just to interrupt i'm gonna go away from my head so the bottom layer layer i went away middle one i went towards now i'm going back away but um i was saying now i'm having to dance full out say the combinations try to figure out the music, try to get the music perfectly so that they can hear it in the background, but it's not blocking my voice and correct them at the same time. And it is exhausting. All of this in a really tight space. So not only am I having to do all that, but I've also had to completely redesign my classes. I've had to do everything stationary. It's a lot more about strengthening instead of movement and it's hard. Meanwhile, I'm not in a studio, I'm in my office. <laughs> on carpet, trying to demonstrate this stuff with a ceiling fan above my head and keeping in mind that some of these kids are in much smaller spaces than I am. And they're scared and they don't know what's going on. And sadly, some of their parents are hysterical and are the people that are going out and hoarding and doing stupid stuff or going to barbecues. Like this isn't a vacation, people, not a vacation. This is time to be in quarantine and be smart so that this doesn't turn out worse than it already is. So yeah, that's my work life. Completely had to redesign my entire job and totally refigure out pretty much how to teach dance. So that's that. On top of that, actually, we also have the fear of people, again, freaking out, which I do understand to a certain extent, but pulling their kids out of everything, getting rid of all expenses that aren't food and diapers. And I do get that. For a lot of those families, that kind of is necessary right now because people have lost their jobs already. And that's terrifying. But some of the people that are doing it are just panicking. And the fact is, is that if you run a small business, work for a small business, or just appreciate small businesses, you know that if that happens, 
there will be no business to go back to once this is over. It takes very little time for a small business to lose enough business to actually go under. So there's that in the back of my head that, oh God, please tell me that these kid people don't freak out and pull their kids out of dance when realistically, if they can't afford it, they need to keep their kids in dance. They're stuck indoors. They're not getting any exercise. They're not getting any socialization. At least this way they can see their friends, they can move and they can do something that's positive. Dance is art and it is expression and these kids are scared and need to express themselves right now. So this is my little PSA. If you can, if at all possible, keep your kids in their dance classes. Keep your kids in their cheer classes if they're allowing them to do them virtually, which a lot of places are right now. So yeah, there's just my little public service announcement for that. Now on the positive side of this, um, I've gotten to spend a lot of time with my husband, which has been really nice. He's a realtor, which, you know, it's a person-to-person -person business, and he's been working all online, pretty much the same thing I'm doing, just having virtual meetings and a lot of phone calls. We don't really know what's going to happen with the market yet, nothing sure, but, you know, it's a scary time. If people can't leave the house, then they don't really feel confident walking into someone else's house to see if they want to buy it or not. So there's that on top of it. So both of us work or are a small business. So we're both kind of freaking out, but at the same time, we are getting to spend a lot of time together. We, I've gotten to clean the house for the first time and God knows how long because we were preparing for competitions and my house got atrocious, let me tell you. I am actually ashamed at how bad it got, <laughs> um, but I just didn't simply didn't have the time to do anything. Now I've got the time. I've been very good about scheduling myself and kind of being strict on a schedule. So every week about on Sunday, I set up pretty much an hour to hour or an hour to two hour, depending on what it is, block in my planner of what I'm going to do that day and it's jam-packed and I've been really, really busy and that's been really helping, honestly, with me staying positive. Uh, it's really helped me feel better about the situation and not despair and, you know, boredom. Idle hands are the devil's plaything. I mean, that is one of the true statements I've ever heard and I'm not allowing my hands to be idle right now. So that's been good. I've actually been getting a lot done. Um, I also organized a food drive at my work, which is awesome. And don't worry, there was no personal contact and we sanitized everything that was brought in. But there are a lot of people that are in harder times than usual because now the stock shelves are empty because people were hoarding. So if they live from paycheck to paycheck, they can't get their needs anymore because People who have plenty of resources bought them all up. So at my work, we organized a food drive and had people donate and that was awesome. So I dropped all that off on Friday, which is yesterday. Um, yeah, just cooking a lot of home cooked meals, trying my best to get takeout from some local meals or local restaurants when I can, try my best to support as much as I can because you know, I want those restaurants to still be there when this is all over. And if they're not, then we're gonna be stuck with nothing but jack-in-the-box and no one needs that. That's kind of what I've been doing at home and around the house and it's been a huge, huge, huge adjustment. It's very scary, but I'm just choosing to remain positive through this and I think that that is a difference. Like, I'm, I'm taking it seriously, but at the same time, despairing and throwing my hands up and whining about everything isn't going to help the situation. It's actually going to make it worse and make me less capable of coping. So I kind of look like Shirley Temple right now, but don't worry. It'll look better, I promise. Um, so I'm back at the top now, my top layer. So I'm going to go back into that part and you should probably do that with like a parting comb, but I lost mine. I can't find it and I'm not going out to get one because that's a totally unnecessary trip. So that's not happening. So now with the top one, this is where I do way less curl. I move through a lot faster and I go a lot lower on my head because I don't want it to be huge ringlet curls. So I'm gonna take the front section. Now you can curl whichever way you want. I prefer to curl back because I have bangs. I think if you've got one, or growing out bangs, if you've got one level of hair, then I think going forward or back doesn't really matter. But for me, because I do have some shorter layers in here, I choose to go back with it. So I go about, I don't know, about for me, it's like at my eye length. I go about there, straight into there, and then I just really quickly curl. So this is just giving it a really loose curl on that. And then I pretty much do that 
down the head, but again, I'm alternating. So I go about halfway down and then curl. So how have you guys been handling the quarantine? Have you done anything for com your community? Have you kind of just laid low or are you being one of the people that uh, decides to go out and risk everyone around you? I know that sounds like a really awful thing to say and but I, you know, I have family members that are immune compromised on the other side of the country that I worry for them because there are times when they do have to go grocery shopping and if they're surrounded by people that have been having barbecues with everybody that they know and, you know, going out drinking with their buddies, then they're at a higher risk. So which group are you a part of? Please share below. Yeah, it's been hard and I'm sure you guys are feeling the same way I am where you kind of feel like it's out of your hands and there's not much you can really do. And um, that's scary. It's, it's a very unsure time and I think that this is the opportunity for us all to kind of band together and stay positive and do what we need to do. That means stay home. Obviously, if you have to get groceries, go get groceries, but immediately wash your hands. Wash your hands before you go. Keep sanitizer with you. Stay away from people at the grocery store. Give them six to eight feet. Don't stand right behind them in line. Like, just be considerate because it's all it takes. You know, if we all follow the rules just for this short amount of time, we'll be okay. But if we have people that don't, then this is gonna last for way longer than it needs to. So now that I've curled everything, now I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna run my fingers through the bottom layers just to kind of break up those curls so that they don't have like, that again, that Shirley Temple look to them. But that is the final look and yeah, I love wearing my hair like this. I feel like it's just really pretty and soft and feminine and you can kind of make it a little funky if you like want to keep the end straight as you curl. It gives it that more bedhead, cool beachy look. So I love that as well. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I really love this hair look. I always love curling my hair if I just want to feel a little bit more spruced up and girly. Um, and it's really not that hard. So be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe below for more videos from moi. And again, you guys, I hope that you are safe, happy, and healthy, and at home, if you can be. Obviously, if you can't be, then I understand, but don't be going out to hang out with your girlfriends. Like, stay home, okay? Just stay home. All right, bye, you guys.